Hey guys, so it's the next day now. We both slept great. Um, if you haven't checked out our review of this hotel yet, be sure you do. So today we are going to go to an old fortress that was built in the 10th century, apparently, um, called Visharad, which is a little bit down the river. Um, it used to actually be its own fortress, but then it was annexed by King Charles into Prague. So it's a little bit out there, but it should be a good time. One thing we did notice is when all the buildings are shuttered here, because it's early in the morning, they actually have really nice doors on them. Unlike in Spain, where they just do a big metal grate in front of the door. All right, so we're just waiting for our Uber to pick us up here. Um, and a little pro tip, if you are right in the middle of Old Town, like we were on a mainly pedestrian road, the Ubers just don't go there. For some reason, they won't pick you up there. So just walk a few blocks away like we did and you can get picked up eventually. Eventually, our Uber arrived and we were whisked away on the 10 minute ride to Vishrad, getting some stunning views of the Vlatava River on the way. We arrived at the brick gate, the northernmost gate into the fortress. This is the newest gate at the fortress, being built in 1841. This was believed to have replaced another gate that was much smaller and had a steeper incline. With the new gate, the army could more easily move vehicles and horses in and out of the fortress. This gate is the site of one of two information desks in the fortress and the starting point for the Casemates and Gorliche Hall tour. Casemates are tunnels that are built into the walls of castles and fortresses, and they were designed to help move goods and troops easily around the fortresses during wartime so that troops were not exposed to attack. Walking through these tunnels, we arrived at the Gorliche Hall, a long and tall open space between two outer walls of the fortress. Our tour guide explained that this area was once used for storage, and it's still being used to store some of the original statues of the Charles Bridge. Even though it was nearly 30 degrees outside, it was only 10 degrees in the casemates. This constant cold temperature and humidity makes this location ideal for storing goods. Every now and then the hall will also be open to the public for concerts and events. So we just did a tour of the casemates and the Gorlich Hall, yeah, I don't Gorliche know. Hall, yeah. and it was re it was really cool. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna walk to see the Gothic cellar, and hopefully we can see the uh, cathedral up here. It's a really really cool fortress. It was really cold in the casemates, though. Very cold. So if you get cold easily, it might be good to bring like a light jacket. Yeah, it stays around eight to ten degrees Celsius there. So mm -hmm. bring a jacket. After walking through the hall, we made our way further up into the fortress, passing by the Rotunda of St. Martin. This is one of the only completely preserved buildings on this site, dating back to about 1100. This chapel is the oldest church in Prague. We passed the rotunda and made our way up to the outer walls. What was once a prime defensive position to the south of the city now makes for one of the most stunning views of the Vlatava River Valley. So we're up here at Vishrad and the view is beautiful. These walls stand hundreds of feet above the river below. Much of the area is now green space and walkways. 
and you can even find some vines and other plants growing where fortifications used to be. From the outer walls, we walked into the central gardens of the fortress, where next stop, the Basilica of St. Peter and St. Paul. This church was the main religious institution on Vishrod, and it makes its mark on the Prague skyline to the south. Before the current Gothic church was built in 1885, the original basilica here was a Romanesque building founded by the first king of Bohemia. He chose this spot to also be his royal residence before it was later moved back to the Prague Castle. The inside of this church is spectacular. No matter where you look, the walls are painted with beautiful frescoes and scenes from the Bible. Some of the walls are painted with perspective, giving the illusion of ledges and shelves that don't actually exist. Even though it is old, the colors of these frescoes still pop and make this a beautiful church to behold. Behind the church is the Vishrad Cemetery, one of the oldest cemeteries in the city, and the final resting place for some of the more prominent figures in both Bohemian and Czech history. Our next stop here was the Gothic Cellar. As we mentioned before, this hill used to contain the royal residence of Bohemia. While the residence itself was destroyed by the Hussite invasion in 1420, part of the cellar of one of these royal buildings still remains. After it was found, the cellar was converted into a museum showcasing several objects of interest, as well as giving the story of Vishrod and Prague. Since it was a beautiful day, we walked a bit more outside and along the walls before walking back down the hill and leaving this beautiful fortress. So we're back from our time over at the Vrishad Fortress and Castle. Um, it was really cool. The tours we went on were really good, um, and it was cool to learn about that that part of Prague, which you don't hear a lot about. Yeah, it's also nice because it's, it's free to go there to do the tour that we did. You have to pay, but it's like an open park, so you don't have to pay to go there. Yeah, and you get really cool views of the new city of Prague and then the south south of the city down the river. So now we are just going to go grab a quick bite to eat, uh, maybe get a few beers, and then we have a tour set up later at the Clementium, which we're not too sure what that is, but it's supposed to be like a really big library and astrological tower and things like that. But it's right across from our hotel, so we thought, what the heck, we'll do that. And then we'll have dinner tonight. The Clementinum was originally founded as a monastery dedicated to St. Clement in the 11th century. It was transformed into a Jesuit college during the conversions in Prague in 1556 and later became part of the Charles University. Now this building is part museum, with the remaining halls housing the National Library of the Czech Republic. One of the main attractions of this building is its Baroque library. This library is filled with globes and frescoes all over the ceiling, with intricate artwork and woodwork throughout. The other attraction here is the tower. The Clementinum Tower is filled with exhibits and old experiments used by astrologists, meteorologists, and other scientists throughout the years. On 
top of this tower, you can get amazing views of the Prague Castle, the Charles Bridge, and the Old Town Prague. The views are absolutely breathtaking. You can access the Baroque Library and the Tower of the Clementinum through a guided tour with a cost of 300 Czech crowns per person. This tour is fairly expensive for the area, but if you're interested in the ancient sciences, it's worth it. Alright, so we're back near our hotel and we decided to end our night with a couple of beers. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to check out the rest of our series where we explore the rest of this beautiful city. The links are in the description down below.